Hi everyone, welcome back. My name is Morgan. This is my channel Pisces Paperbacks and today I'm going to be reading all of the books on my TBR with the lowest average rating. This is by no means an original idea. I think the first person I saw do this was Kayla from Books and Lala who of course the OG of fun TBR vlogs and I figured now is a good time to do this because I just finished reorganizing my TBR shelf and finished scanning all of the books that I have onto my Goodreads shelf where I have every single owned TBR book that I have. I'm going to be trying to read the bottom five rated books. I guess we'll see if I agree that they deserve to be the lowest rated books on my TBR. I want to read them in the order of fifth lowest to like the lowest so that's the order I'm going to talk to you about them in. The fifth lowest rated book has a rating of 3.4 and that is She is a Haunting by Trang Ten Tran. I bought this last year and I'm just obsessed with the end pages. This book follows Jade. She is visiting Vietnam to see her estranged father and is like, if I just kind of suppress who I am, being queer, how American I am for five weeks, I can get through this, it'll be fine. But she keeps waking up in the middle of the night seeing ghosts and that's kind of the plot. I love ghosts, I love haunted houses as tropes, as plot devices, so I'm so excited for this. I've honestly heard good things, so I'm surprised that this is the fifth lowest. The fourth lowest rated book on my TBR is The Lost Ones by Sheena Kamal. I know this is set in Canada by a Canadian author, which is really cool. I don't really read a lot of authors that are Canadian, so I don't know, it's fun. This is a thriller about a woman named Nora who's contacted because the daughter that she put up for adoption 15 years prior has vanished. The girl is a chronic runaway and the police have kind of given up looking for her so the adoptive parents have reached out to the birth mother kind of as a last resort to see if she can help. So Nora kind of decides that she's going to go look for her and that's kind of the story. It is a thriller. I am excited about this. Thrillers read pretty fast, I think. I have heard things about this. I've heard nothing about this. I don't know anyone who's ever read this. I picked this up because it was on sale for $3.99 at ShopRite when I worked there. Third lowest rated book on my TBR has an average rating of 3.33 and that is Slow Boat by Hideo Furukawa. This I picked up because Ariel Bissett mentioned it on her podcast like two years ago and I bought this like a year and a half ago because she had mentioned it and I I don't even know if she read it I just think she like mentioned it in a haul and I was like sure it has a really pretty cover it's really short so I'm hoping this one doesn't take too long to read the second lowest rated book on my TBR has an average rating of 3.21 and that is Dead Dead Girls by Nikisa Afia. This is a 1920s set mystery about a girl who works at a cafe in Harlem. Several other black girls have been turning up dead and when she gets into kind of an altercation with a police officer she gets arrested and given the ultimatum that she either has to help solve the crime or she's gonna end up in jail. So I know that this is a queer book. It says on the back that she has a girlfriend so slay pride and I am very excited to read this. This is also going to be fun because I know that the buzzword buzzwordathon prompt for June is a book that has repeated words in the title and obviously this has dead in it twice so that'll be nice and easy for me. And last but not least the lowest rated book on my TBR has an average rating of 3.1 and that is The Paul Bearers Club by Paul Tremblay. The only thing I know about this book is that Kayla from Books and Lala gave this five stars so that's like vastly different vibe than it being the lowest rated book on my TBR. I believe this is kind of a weird atmospheric horror novel about this guy who as a teenager kind of joins a club of just him and this one girl who go to a local funeral home as pallbearers and he is now writing kind of the story of his teenage years as a memoir and she is like writing her notes in the captions or in the sides, but not the captions, what they called, the margins. So it's almost like this kind of interactive experience to read it. I love mixed media things like that, so I think I'm really going to enjoy this. I also think it's like a sprinkle of vampires is kind of like the more speculative element in this. I'm honestly looking forward to this a lot, so I'm kind of saving it for the end, but we shall see because apparently it's the lowest rated book on my TBR. So I'm going to start with She's a Haunting and I will update you when I'm a little bit further in. Hi, it's been a full week. I filmed I think my last clip on Saturday last week, June 1st. Today is June 
9th. <laughs> I've been really busy. I actually went to Florida for three days with a friend. She was donating stem cells and she got to take a companion with her to keep her company. And she so graciously asked me if I could go and I went with her. So I thought I would get more reading done on that trip, but I was exhausted the whole time. Like we were busy, we were doing stuff and I just wasn't in the mood. So I didn't read that much. But now I wanted to let you know that I am 224 pages into She is a Haunting and I'm absolutely having such a good time. I don't remember what I told you about the plot before, but I know what <laughs> it's going on now because I'm more than halfway in. So I thought I'd give you a little bit more detail. This is about Jade. She is spending five weeks in Vietnam visiting her father with her younger sister, Lily. And she's there, even though she like hates her dad and he's been estranged from her for years because he agreed to pay for her tuition to UPenn because her scholarships do not cover the entire thing. Her mom doesn't know about this deal that she's made. She's there, she's so mad at her father. There's like not really a relationship there. And while they're there, they're staying in this French colonial house um, that was originally built and lived in by like a French military couple from when Vietnam was colonized and kind of like under occupation and her father is fixing it up and going to be turning it into a bed and breakfast so they're living in this house that kind of has metaphorical ghosts of racism in the foundations right but also actual ghosts and she is being actually haunted by a person who used to live in this house so it's kind of talking about like generational trauma because her great-grandmother was actually born in this house lived there until she was eight because her family worked for them and like kind of dealing with all of that she is queer and she's hiding that from her mother and her her father as well and she just recently had a falling out with her very good her only friend her best friend Hallie so there's a lot going on here but generally it's about the house being haunted and her trying to figure out how to get away from this haunted house I'm loving it I think that the writing is really beautiful it's kind of like shorter sentences mixed with scenes that are kind of written in a way where you like don't even notice the writing style is very like normal but the parts that are kind of graphically horrific are so well done I think this is a really good haunting haunted house where it's not like ooh things are moving around like it's actually spooky if you don't like bug horror do not pick this up because there has been a lot of bug stuff specifically like ants with like parasitic fungi and like she cough coughed up a spider leg and like somebody maybe pulling a worm out of their eye like it's all gross stuff but like the bug horror is delivering also i did not realize before i picked this up but the author grew up in philadelphia and now lives in georgia but grew up in philadelphia and jade is from philly and mentions it often she's going to UPenn the girl that she's kind of befriending is going to temple in the fall like she's mentioning places and I'm like oh my god she's like fr and it's not just like a one-off mention that and then it's completely irrelevant to the whole book it's like kind of irrelevant she could be from anywhere but she is from Philly and she mentions it and she misses Philadelphia when she's in Vietnam so like girl after my own heart um I'm probably gonna read more today I would like to finish it today if possible because I haven't even started on the other four books and I wanted this video to go up next week so wish we shall see hi it's been another four days um it's Thursday I actually finished she is a haunting on Sunday that evening when I spoke to you about it so I actually want to do like a little wrap up talk about how I felt about it I really really liked this I thought the writing was really interesting there were some parts where it just kind of be like really like the writing style was pretty typical like I would say not bad or good but neutral which I guess is good because you like don't notice it but then it would kind of have these moments of this more kind of like staccato imagery of shorter sentences that maybe don't make sense but it's because there's all this weird stuff happening that you're like things are changing so quickly and even within the f one sentence the perspective of kind of like wh who's talking like whose observations it are it is um are changing and I just I really really like this maybe I'm like stupid but there are some things that I was like confused by like as I was reading I was like I don't know what's happening but I'm going with it I'm going with it and I'm having a good time so I really really liked this I liked the kind of like cathartic emotional resolution that happens with her relationship with her mom and 
the relationship with her dad was so interesting especially like with the developments you kind of like find out about as you get further into the book and I really liked this it feels a little bit like Jade is the only character like you spend so much time with her you are so deeply in her head that everybody else feels a little bit paler in comparison but there are really really good interesting moments in this I give it four stars probably a little bit higher than four but like I don't really know and I'm so glad I read this something else I wanted to talk about while I'm reading these books is like why I think they have these lower ratings so when you go to she is a haunting on goodreads you can see that the bell chart of her like ratings are actually pretty typical like this is a true bell chart so I think that it's really a 3.4 I think it's 3.4 because there's a lot of people with more middling ratings which I personally don't relate to but like okay and then when you go into like the one star reviews which I sometimes do for books that I like just to like see because I think it's interesting to see that when people hate the aspects of a book that you enjoyed a lot of people actually said this book was boring and I deeply disagree they were like where's the haunting where's the haunted house it's just like her like stuff happening but it's not haunted what do you think hauntings are if not stuff happening like I don't know but I really enjoyed this I think this probably deserves a higher star rating but it I think it's going to be more controversial because of the writing style which does take a moment to kind of sl like slide into because it is a little bit more stylized than the average young adult novel in my opinion i will also say that in terms of the horror i think this is actually did a really really good job it didn't shy away from being more grotesque than i think some YA novels do and i just really enjoyed it i was freaked out i love a ghost i love a haunted house love bug stuff and just like gross it's so like hot and sweaty and you can feel it so i I thought this was really good so I'm actually into my next book I'm two pages <laughs> technically I'm on page four but I actually have only just read the first chapter which is the first page and the second page so I'm two pages in and I started this on Monday so I haven't read anything in the last couple days but I'm about to go to the park and read for a while and once I'm like way further in maybe halfway in I will come back to you and tell you what this is about and how I'm feeling about it. Hello for another update. It is Sunday <laughs> the 16th and I'm only 90 pages into The Lost Ones. So I have it right here. I caved and I finally just like borrowed the audiobook from the library. I don't know why I didn't do that before but I was determined that I wanted to read this physically and I'm just like not picking it up. Not that I'm not like enjoying it. I'm not like loving it but I'm not disliking it. And I actually want to tell you a little bit more about what it's about since I don't think I actually got into it that much last time we spoke. So this is kind of like a moody mystery that's going to kind of dip into thriller territory, but I'm not super sure, about a woman named Nora. She is a loner and she's traumatized and she's very, very secretive about her life. And one day, it, the first chapter, only two pages, she gets a call from a random number asking her to meet up at this cafe. She goes, it is the adoptive parents of the baby that she put up for adoption, I think 15 years ago, who has run away. And she's run away before, but she's always come back. So the police like aren't really looking for her. They're like, she's gone. She doesn't want to, we're not really looking that hard because they think that she wants to be gone. And so the parents are like, she's always come back before and she is a good kid. Can you please kind of look into it? And Nora's like, no and left but she is kind of looking into it now she works for a private investigator and his life partner who is a journalist as both of their shared research assistants and she kind of secretly lives in the basement of the office she doesn't really have any friends and she's in recovery from alcoholism she okay I'm liking it I'm liking it the writing is edgy she's pretty melodramatic pretty much every other sentence is kind of like sprinkled in like she's a loner she's different she doesn't like it's a little it's trying to be like cool and dark and in some ways it is succeeding but it's also melodramatic but you also learn as you kind of get to know Nora more that she has had a lot of 
traumatic things happen in her life so you kind of understand why she is the way she is I'm not disliking it it's not bad um, I'm interested to see like where this is going to go because you're starting to find out that there's maybe bigger powers at play in terms of where this girl has gone and why she hasn't come home than you first expected and yeah I'm in honestly I am enjoying it so far it just took me by surprise how like edgy it was I really don't have like a better word for it so I'm gonna be listening to this today I have to run back and get my laundry from the laundromat because I dropped it off a little bit ago and I think my dryer time is about to be done but that's what I'm doing I have errands that I need to run today and I have a lot to get done I'm going to Ireland in a couple weeks and I just need, have shopping I need to do so that's what I'm doing today but I also wanted to show you yesterday I had a really good day yesterday I went to a cat cafe with my girlfriend because today is one year since our first date and um, we also went to a bookstore over on South Street kind of like in Queen Village area that I saw on Instagram I thought was so cute I'm so glad we got to go it's called head house books and they've been open since 2005 it's an independent bookstore it's so cute it has such a great selection for an in I feel like Philadelphia is really lacking on the indie bookstore front specifically with like popular fiction I don't know there's another one kind of on south that I just think is like more pretentious vibes I just don't like it as much and then like there's one kind of in Northern Liberties, but it has like the smallest selection ever, even though it's really cool. You know what I mean? And then like there's the neighborhood books placed by my house, but, and I love that store, but it's primarily secondhand and used books, which I also love. But sometimes you just want to shop at a like fun, cool indie bookstore. So I went to Head House Books and I bought Cuckoo by Gretchen Felker Martin. And I. I'm very excited about this. It is a conversion camp based horror novel about something creepy kind of wanting to become human. So I'm just like, look at the, ugh, the image is so fucking creepy. I'm so excited. Let's go listen to our audiobook now. Hi, it's Monday evening and I just finished The Lost Ones by Sheena Kamal. I liked this. I was kind of like, mostly bored neutral it's going to be like a 2.753 star and then I really actually liked the kind of climactic action and how the end kind of happened so it's going to be like a 3.25 but before I kind of get into more of my feelings about it I want to say that last time I talked about this book I think I was a little dismissive I called it edgy and melodramatic I think what I was trying to get at is that this is just not a tone of book that I read very often. It's a lot grittier and that's just like, that is what it was, it was trying to be like a gritty mystery about this woman with a past and I'm just not used to that and so to me it came across as somewhat melodramatic but she, it was well done for what it was trying to do in my opinion. I really ended up liking how the threads came together. At some points I was like, where is this even going? Like it was introducing a lot of elements, but it tied together pretty nicely. And it was one of those things where I made the connections of the mystery, like a, like a second or a couple pages uh, before the book made those connections. So it, it was giving you enough hints and information that you were able to put the pieces together, but it was never, at least to me, and I'm not somebody who's like reading mysteries and going, what's happening? Let me theorize. Like I'm just reading and like as I'm reading, if my brain is making connections, it's making connections, right? So for people who read like that, I don't think that this book was doing too much to feed you the information in a way where you realize so early that it annoys you that they aren't connecting the dots yet. You know what I mean? There was one aspect where I thought there was going to be a romantic element introduced and I got kind of pissed off. I was like, that does not have a place in this novel. And it was actually handled in a way that surprised me. I really liked it. Um, not to say it was like a positive thing, but you know, I'm just saying I liked how that was handled. And overall, I did enjoy this. What I want to say is if you're interested in reading this, you know, it's about a woman looking for her daughter who's gone missing um she has no interest in this daughter because she's been extremely traumatized i definitely think that 
trigger warnings and content warnings would be important for people going into reading this book, specifically about sexual assault. Nora, the main character, has been assaulted and is very traumatized from that. And rightly so, it was an extremely traumatic situation that happened to her. There's not like a graphic portrayal, like a graphic description on the page of the assault, but it is spoken about with very frank language in a way that I think is realistic and she's just she was a very interesting person this has an average rating of 3.35 on Goodreads and honestly I I kind of I understand that I think it is a very kind of good solid middling book if this is a genre that you really like I think you're more inclined to like it but it's not something that somebody outside of the genre who doesn't read it that much I think is going to read and be like wow I'm so interested and entranced I need to continue the series I need to get more into the genre like I just don't think it's a book that's going to do that but I do feel very satisfied with my reading experience and I like that I don't know if I talked about this at all I know that I mentioned before that she works for an investigative journalist as kind of a research assistant but the author herself has like a degree in political science and worked as a crime and investigative journalism researcher for like films and tv and so I definitely think that she brought a lot of those skills and like background experience into the way that Nora as a character is doing her investigation and connecting with people and kind of how the characters talk about things like that I thought that was very well done I went to school for journalism I was a journalist for like not even a year I worked at a newspaper but sometimes you read books that involve aspects of journalism and you're like girl that is not how that works and that's not how that would ever work and I think this did a really good job it was also fun to read a book that was set in Canada and very much about Canada and I'm not Canadian and I don't really read that many books by Canadian authors so I think that was really well done the environment and the settings felt very realistic for me and I could picture it as someone who has never been to Vancouver <laughs> now that we're done with this Finally, I can start with Slow Boat. This is only like 120 pages, so I really want to get through this quicker than this, which took me a week. So I've read two out of five books, and those two books took me two weeks. So <laughs> this I'm going to get a start on tonight. It's about a man who has been left by his girlfriend. He feels like his life is going nowhere, and he wants to see if he can escape the confines of the city of Tokyo. So I'm going to read this. I'm going to get started tonight. Hopefully I can read at least half of it tonight and then um, finish it tomorrow. And then I'm going to the beach on Wednesday so I can bring dead, dead girls to the beach with me on Wednesday. So let's get into it. Hi. So it's been a month. <laughs> the last time I filmed anything, I had just finished reading The Lost Ones by Sheena Kamal. And that was on July, nope, June 17th. And today is July 13th. So it's been almost a month and I have been reading in the meantime. I've actually read a bunch. I just haven't been talking to you about it. So I just want to catch you up because since then I have finished Slow Boat and I also just yesterday finished Dead Dead Girls by Nikessa Afia. And I want to tell you about both of these because I, after these I only have one book left on this TBR. I also think that going forward I got to limit it to three books per like TBR video because five I don't read fast enough or <laughs> just like volume wise enough to have those videos coming out in a timely manner. So three books a video going forward. But let me tell you about these. So I finished Slow Boat on the plane flying to Ireland. I went to Ireland to go see Taylor Swift. It was incredible. It was literally so amazing. I told you guys that I was going to read this when I was at the beach, I believe, because I was going to the beach that week. And I didn't. Instead, I read something completely different that I absolutely love that I will talk about in like my wrap up when I do it. But I want to tell you about this. So I think I did tell you the synopsis. I honestly don't remember. So I'll just do it again now. It's about an unnamed narrator, maybe. I don't know if he's unnamed, who is trying to get out of Tokyo. He's had three girlfriends in his life. And with each of the girlfriends, there was a situation where he was trying to leave the city or one of them had to leave the city and he's just never been able to actually leave the boundary of the city of Tokyo. And he's like, I got to get out of here. And I'm just such a loser and I just, I need a new, I need to start fresh. And he's kind of flashing back up to each of those three like big loves of his life and telling you about them. This is a weird, <laughs> a weird ass book. Um, he is not shy about talking about how much he loves boobs. It's a bit crude, 
I didn't love it. <laughs> I, this is one where I kind of see why it has like a 3.3 average rating on Goodreads. I do think it's just a matter of personal taste in terms of the book though. I don't think that this is like a badly written book or a bad book. I think it's just personal preference and enjoyment. I personally give this book like a two. So I get it. Maybe two and a half. So like I get it. But I don't actually think this book is bad. Do you know what I mean? It's just odd and very uh, blunt. And I don't know if that is because I'm just not used to reading Japanese translated fiction or if I'm not re used to reading literary fiction or I'm not used to reading translated fiction and I, or is it a combination of all of those or is it just I didn't like it? So it's not that I hated it. Like I did while I was reading it, I w it reads really quickly and I wasn't, you know, hating my time, but the whole time I was like, what the, you know what I mean? So <laughs> I don't know about this one, but it makes sense that it's in the lowest five, the five lowest rated books on my TBR. Like that doesn't feel unrealistic to me, but it also doesn't feel like totally deserved because the book isn't badly written or constructed and it has it has a perspective it definitely has a perspective so yeah this is the one I feel the most like uh, about because it's just not really my genre in the first place but then I just finished listening to the audiobook of Dead Dead Girls this is a historical mystery set in the 1920s during the Harlem Renaissance and it is about our main character Louise Louise Lloyd she is a girl who loves going to clubs during prohibition so she loves going to the clubs she loves going dancing she lives in a boarding house for young women and she lives there with her girlfriend Rosa Maria and she's just kind of like living life when she was a teenager she was kidnapped by a serial killer and she managed to escape with three other young girls who had been taken by this man and so that's kind of like her legacy she doesn't like talking about it she's like let me just I need to get out of my I've never been able to leave Harlem but I just I would rather not be known as like this Harlem's hero is kind of the nickname that she's gotten but now she's 26 it's been 10 years since that happened and other black girls are starting to show up dead in the areas where she frequents and the kind of catalyst of her getting involved in investigating this is that she gets into an altercation with the police officer and then the detective on the case is like, I will make this completely go away for you, but you need to help me investigate because you can go to places that I can't as a white man who is a police officer. So that is kind of the premise of the book. I, I didn't like this. Like, I really did not enjoy this book. It has such a beautiful cover and I picked it because it has the funniest dedication I've ever seen. To Aaron Tveit, I'm free on Thursday night and would like to hang out. Please respond to this and then hang out with me on Thursday night when I am free. Like that's one of the reasons I bought it because she clearly has a sense of humor but this book is so clunky. I just don't think it is a well-crafted book. I was reading it and I listened to the audiobook. I listened to most of it on three times speed because I was like I need to finish this for a project and also because it fulfills a lot of prompts for a lot of different like year-long reading challenges that I'm that I'm doing this year um not like super strict ones but like casual ones with like prompts and this fulfills a lot of different prompts so I'm like I just gotta get through it and it's not like it's hor. I'm like I'm not angry like it's not making me mad and usually the books that I dnf are because I'm like the writing is horrible or like it's pissing me off or I'm just like so bored to tears that like I can't do it this was none of those three things and yet I really didn't like it so yeah it's about Louise she's investigating the murders I actually made a list of things because as I was listening to the audiobook I was thinking of things to say about it that I didn't like and then I was like I'm never gonna remember these so let me pull up my list so first of all I think that this book really struggles with the transitions from scene to scene and I know that it's common for like a chapter to end and then you jump and you're like in the next scene something else is happening that makes sense like I understand how books work but this book seems like a lot of the scenes didn't have like it they didn't really end like they didn't have like a conclusion that felt like it was about to transition into something else it just kind of cut off and then we were in the next chapter and I think that like maybe stood out to me more because I was listening to the audiobook so when you're reading you can visually you get that cue 
from like the words ending on the page that the chapter is about to end so that's fine but when you're just listening to the book and then suddenly it's the next sentence and something completely different ha is happening I'm just like oh this book doesn't transition anything at all like most of the time and there are scenes that do that like throughout the book but it happens often enough like the problem happens often enough that I noted it the entire time. I also think that the character work in this book just like isn't very good other than Louise the main character. Everyone else seemed so like paper thin kind of like I, they were so not real people that you could just see right through them the whole time. It was very odd especially since she has like a long-term girlfriend that she's in a relationship with and loves and the girlfriend it feels like she's barely in the book and when she is her only character traits are that she loves to drink or they are together like those are the only things that I know about her other than that she has her twin Raphael who is also there and like uh, she also has twin younger sisters who ostensibly are a really big part of her life and she cares about a lot but she doesn't really have any converse like they don't converse the way that people do in real life like with her and her sisters it's just it's just very odd I just don't think that was very good and another thing that really bothered me is that so much of this book and the things that she's investigating are based on her intuition but she's there's not in the narration like hints and things to make connections between that you as the reader can also be like something's not right here and that's an important phrase because I cannot count how many times throughout the book somebody says something to her and I don't know if they're lying I don't know if they're telling the truth but she will just sit there and be like something's not right she could just feel that that they were lying and something just wasn't right she was smoking a cigarette she could tell something wasn't right and it's like find another way <laughs> to communicate that she is experiencing a hunch or an intuitive uh thought but also that's not enough when you are working for the police investigating a serial killer. Like, it can be enough, but sometimes in between the hunches, you need to have actual evidence that leads you to different clues that you investigate, and then once in a while, you make an intuitive leap. Instead of literally every single decision you make, the entire book, being based on intuitive leaps. Like, it was infuriating, and, it just felt like the, like the author was just like, how do I make sure the reader knows that they should be skeptical right now? I know I'm going to make sure the main character says internally something's not right here. Instead of like with leaving clues, show, don't tell kind of vibe. You know what I mean? It was just, it really annoyed me. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell, this book really annoyed me. Um, it felt... It's not that long of a book, and it it was just kind of repetitive. It felt like things just were, it just felt like a bunch of things that happened to happen in the order that they happened, rather than a story that kind of leads through itself to the end. And then also, this is kind of tying back to the bad characterization uh, thing that I talked about earlier. She just seems kind of flimsy. Flimsy is the word I was looking for earlier. Um, inconsistent and flimsy as a character. So specifically towards the end of the book, she is interacting with a different character and internally she thinks um, she didn't like lying, especially to people in power, which completely contradicts the entire book where she's like, I hate people in positions of authority and I stick up for myself and I like to stick it to the man, like whatever, whatever she's doing. And like maybe she's a bad liar and that's what that's trying to communicate, but she does not like respect authority like that's a that's a point of her character so why is now at the at the last five seconds of this she's like "Ooh, i don't like lying to people in positions of power it's like what are you talking about anyway this is the first one of the five and now i've read four of them i only have one left the first one of the five books in this video where i'm like yes i see why it has a low rating and I am also going to give it a low rating. Like this is maybe like a like a one and a half, 1.75. Like it's not horrible. It's not enraging, but it, it's so, ugh. you know what I mean? And then there is an afterward where the author talks more about the reason that she said it in 1920s and how she really is interested in that time period. It makes her feel connected to her history. 
which is fascinating i loved it except for the fact that she even in this story in the that afterward was like with like i could have set her story in the contemporary world with the current murder of black women in america and you're right that is a horrible thing that is true that you could have set that this story during contemporary times but you chose to set it in the 1920s and despite the fact that she was going to speakeasies that's really the only thing about this book and she like mentioned like the flapper dresses and stuff that's the only thing about this book that felt like it was about the like it was in the 1920s the rest of this book it felt like it could have been happening whenever it didn't feel really grounded in place which was just frustrating because it is such a beautiful cover it is such an interesting concept and I was really excited to read about this time period and it, I just don't feel like the book was trying to really world build which you even though it's set in you know our real world when you write a historical novel you still have to do effective world building because that's not where people nowadays live and they're not mysteries per se even though they have mysteries in them but I really think that an author that does incredible historical world building is Beverly Jenkins who writes historical romances with black characters and really makes the world building and history of the specific time and specific places that she sets her books a central focus of the books and I think that's one of the strongest points the strongest suits that she has in her writing in her novels and her romances and this book is just kind of like it is a debut but I'm just I just don't know I don't know I'm definitely not going to continue in this series unfortunately but I will be interested to see if she writes anything else ever and like what those kind of things are and what reviews they're getting because she has interesting ideas and I'm not I don't like hate the book but I just was so disappointing so I don't know I don't know but the last book on my list that I need to read is The Paul Bearers Club by Paul Tremblay this is getting back into horror which there was a couple other horror books on this list that I've really enjoyed. I got this book because it was recommended by Kayla at Books and Lala. She read this and really liked it. It's a horror novel about two friends in the 1980s who one of them's a really like a loser, but he befriends this really cool girl and they start volunteering together at the funeral home in the Paul Bearers Club is I think that's what it is. That's what it's called, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Anyway, it's a lot of like weird kind of scary stuff happening they're teenagers and then as an adult he decides to write a memoir about that summer and like processing it and like trying to understand what happens and then the book is his memoir but also notes from that friend so she is not only um like annotating it and like underlining things and writing stuff on the sides I don't know if you can see that red is printed in the book but then also there's like interstitials where she's commenting notes between his chapters and so it's kind of like this dialogue between what he remembers and what she remembers and us as readers trying to see if we can create a full picture of the truth and I love books like that I love epistolary novels so much and I also love kind of like footnotes as a part of the text not in addition to the text like reading the footnotes or reading extra things is kind of important to understanding the story. I love that. I love non-fictional non-fiction. So reading a fiction book where there is a non-fiction book in the story. So we as the reader understand that like, like there's metatextual things happening there. I love that. Paul Bear's Club. Let's go. Hi everyone. I'm back and I am actually done. <laughs> with the Paul Bearer Club. So I know I said that I would come back and talk to you guys when I was halfway through, but I read at night. So I got like a third, a little bit over a third of the way through. And then I was like, I want to go to sleep. And then I just didn't do it the next day. And then I didn't do it the next day. And then yesterday I just read the last 200 pages of this book. So <laughs> let me give you an update. I think I told you before that it's like, it's written as if it's the main character's memoir. And then it's his friend writing her notes and her reactions to this. So it's about Art Barbara, like I said, and it is his memoir. And it is mostly recounting one summer in the year 1988, wherein he's in high school and he starts this Paul Bearers Club and he befriends Mercy. And it's just like, he is sickly and lonely and she's like one of his first, basically his only friend. And then it jumps to like, later in his life and it's basically a coming of age story of their friendship through several decades 
and also kind of has whispers of vampires and like that's kind of the horror element so I liked this did I I did like it and I thought that it was it's so confusing because it is playing completely with the idea of the unreliable narrator and perception because Mercy's notes on the side and her interjections are often contradicting what he is saying or adding context that he chose or not to write or doesn't like he has warped his memory of the events to make it fit more his mental narrative and so it's it is interesting I understand what I picked this book up because Kayla from Books and Lala really really loved it and she's like it's not really a horror it's more like a like a coming of age novel where you're watching just like a movie and there's I think her Goodreads review is like imagine you're watching a coming of age a24 movie and there's a vampire movie playing three theaters down and you can kind of hear it and then that's kind of what this book is and I feel that I didn't love the ending of the memoir part I finished that and I was like huh and then I read the next couple pages of Mercy's notes and I was like hmm interesting which is like not the reaction you want to have at the end of the book I mostly feel conflicted because I do think it was evocative I think it was interestingly written but art is a little insufferable and so is mercy something that I was thinking about is I remember distinctly Kayla saying in a, in a video that she was like mercy is like one of my favorite characters that I've ever read and I'm gonna remember her forever and I was reading this and I was like mercy is really annoying <laughs> like she she pissed me off several times she's just kind of like annoying and I'm like favorite we just have very different tastes sometimes huh so this one I don't know what I want to rate it I think I it's not like I was bored I wasn't bored I kind of knew going in to expect a very kind of slower paced character driven character driven atmospheric read rather than a plot driven book like I knew that this was kind of like all vibes no plot so I knew that going in my expectations were set correctly so I wasn't bored and I did like it mostly and I did think that the scary parts were scary so like I did like it but also at the same time I'm like did I like the end I don't know it's very up for interpretation um it the book it's interesting because it's on purpose all of this is on purpose but it tells you one thing and then it tells you a different thing and it wants you to believe one thing but it also knows that you could interpret it these two other ways so it is ambiguous it's an ambiguous ending if people don't like that then whatever I like an ambiguous ending but I'm like I don't know about this one so I think I'm probably gonna give it like a 3.5 3.75 it's not a four it's between a three and a four I don't know but this I don't think it has a 3.1 average rating which is so low and I kind of get it but I also think a lot of the people rating it low had the incorrect expectations going in and that is the, a problem and ugh, I think about this sometimes because sometimes it's like it wasn't what I expected and so I enjoyed it less than I thought I would but that's not the book's fault you know what I mean but also it's a fair thing to take into account when you're rating something because like did it pitch itself correctly did it sell itself correctly I don't know um 3.1 seems a little aggressively low I will say it seems a bit aggressively low for something that is like well written and interestingly done and compelling in certain ways so I don't know that is however the last book <laughs> on this journey that I went on reading the five lowest rated books on my TBR so here they are um she's a haunting the lost ones slow boat dead dead girls and the pallbearers club so I think did they deserve to be the lowest rated on this TBR kind of some of them because it's not like they're aggressively rated low I think this one probably shouldn't be rated as low as it is I think dead dead girls honestly I hated it um I think it should be rated lower but the lost ones and slow boat I think slow boat is truly so dependent on your taste that it's 
I kind of, I get why that one's low. Let me rank these for you of my enjoyment. Okay, here we are. I definitely enjoyed She's a Haunting the most. It's the highest rated of all of these and it doesn't actually have like that. It's like a 3.4 something. It's not actually that low of a rating, you know what I mean? It just happened to be the fifth lowest on this list. I thought this was really well done. I thought it was interesting. I thought it was scary. I love a haunted house. I thought it was gross. I think this is really good. I'm glad I read it. So, I mean, I bought it like a year ago, but I'm glad I read it so soon after buying it. After that, I feel conflicted about these because I was kind of bored reading this one, but I don't think this is like notably better than this. They're kind of like ranked similarly. This is also the second highest on my lowest rated and this is the lowest. So it's kind of funny that they're together in my mind. And then this one, it was just so quick, even though I didn't really like it, it was pretty easy to read. Like, it was fine. And then I just, I had to, I bumped the audiobook of this up to three times speed because I just needed to finish it. I just needed it to be done, which is always a bad sign. So, you know, it is what it is. I will say, because I have been thinking about it this whole time, it does not escape my notice that four out of five of these are by people of color. So that's kind of frustrating. Is it maybe just, it might just because of the books that I have. I mean, an owned TBR is personal to each person. It's frustrating that four out of five of the lowest rated books on my TBR, I have people of color. You know what I mean? But I will say the lowest one of all of them is a white guy, just some white guy. So I think it's an interesting thing. I don't really have any conclusions to draw about it. It does kind of bother me but what can I do about it? These are just the books that I own. So I really enjoyed this project. I think if I do something like this again, I won't pick five books. I'll just pick three. It's a little bit more manageable for me, but I'm really glad I did this, even though it took me like a month longer than I expected. Um, let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you again next time. Bye!